Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. So Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones is written and directed by George Lucas. The film stars Ian McGregor, Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, Samuel L. Jackson, and Christopher Lee. And the film is about Anakin Skywalker and Padme starting to form this romance with each other after 10 years of not seeing each other. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan Kenobi is trying to go out and investigate who's been trying to assassin the Senator. He does discover a clone army and things just don't go pretty. So before I review Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, my guest star, Stupid Beagle Reviews, is going to be reviewing this movie. So Nate, take it away, dude. Thank you so much, 22 Tiger Dude, for having me on this channel to talk about my least favorite Star Wars movie. Isn't that great? <laughs> the movie I get to review on your channel is my least favorite Star Wars movie. So I already did a review on uh, Attack of the Clones on my channel five months ago about, about that. So you can watch that if you want, but I'm gonna talk about this movie again because I hate it that much. So Attack of the Clones is just, it's about the romance between Anakin and Padme and all that and how it blossoms and how the Empire kind of starts and how the clones are formed and all that great wonderful stuff. <laughs> so first I'll start with the pros. Um, uh, ye, ooh, that's a tough one. Probably Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. Ewan McGregor is a great actor. I like his performance in this movie and he seems to work with the script very well. It's a very cheesy script but he seems to work with it so well. Ewan McGregor is a masterful actor and he's so good as Obi-Wan. By far the best part of the prequels for me. And that's probably it. I'm gonna be honest, that's probably all my only <laughs> pro with this movie. And then let's go into the negatives, of course! Hayden Christensen and Padme are terrible. I mean, <laughs> it's probably not their fault. Because I heard that Natalie Portman is great in other things. It's probably George Lucas's directing that made her terrible. But Hayden Christensen, I've never seen him be good in anything. His acting hasn't improved really since that old Goosebumps show. And their romance, I just hate it. I can't stand the romance in this movie. At all. <laughs> because there's literally like an entire hour of this movie. I forget exactly where it is because I haven't watched this movie in a while, obviously. And there's like an entire hour of this movie where Anakin and Padme are just like walking around and there's political squabble where no action happens. There's just like an entire hour of boring exposition that you don't care about and romance that you also don't care about. And even the action in this movie doesn't work. The scene where they chase Zam Wessel is okay, but there's some really stupid moments like Anakin jumping out of that speeder thing and jumping into another one and, and Ewan McGregor going, I hate when he does that. What, is that just something Hayden Christensen does? There's just so many dumb lines during that chase that just kind of ruins it. But there's one line that I really like, like, like specifically when the guy comes up to Obi-Wan he's like, you want to buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. That's great. That's by far probably the funniest moment of all the prequels. <laughs> but yeah, the action in this movie is just not good. I mean, the arena fight could have been exciting, but during the entire thing, they had to have 3PO had his head swap with a battle droid and him running around making jokes, which wasn't funny at all. It just ruined a fantastic character and made him one of the worst parts of your of your movie and ruined that action scene. And also the scene where they're inside the, uh, what's it called? What, what is it? The droid factory, yeah. That was also really dumb. It just felt like a video game, honestly. <laughs> and also the scene where Obi-Wan has to try to defeat Jango Fett. We'll talk more about Jango Fett later. That whole sequence was just really stupid because, like, because there are so many times when Obi-Wan clearly would have died and they're just like shooting at him and he clearly would have been hit by the shot but somehow they're still missing him and somehow he's still alive. If you've seen Attack of the Clones, you probably know what I'm talking about, but it's a really poorly filmed action scene. And also, let's talk about Jango Fett a little bit. I don't really like Jango Fett very much. I mean, Boba Fett was such a mysterious character in the original trilogy, and I don't like that the entire clone army was made from 
Boba Fett's father. I just thought that was kind of a stupid thing. And Jango Fett isn't really fleshed out that much. He's just kind of a boring, bland character. And the kid who plays Boba Fett... What were they thinking? <laughs> and also, another thing about I really don't like about this movie is that they cast Christopher Lee as the villain. That sounds like a perfect idea. Casting Christopher Lee as a Sith Lord? Yes, please. But, in this movie, he's not fleshed out at all. He's just like a gentleman who does talks about politics a lot, and he's really bland, and he wasn't fleshed out in a way that he would be interesting. And even the final action scene of this movie is so underwhelming, especially when Yoda comes in and jumps around like a puppet and it looks really ridiculous. It's so underwhelming. I mean, this movie literally doesn't have anything redeemable about it, I'm gonna be honest. And another thing that's really poor about this movie is that with Anakin, George Lucas seems to be seems to get anger mixed up with being a whiny brat. In this entire movie, Hayden Christensen's performance just comes off as whiny, and I really hate it. But one scene in particular that I do like uh, with Anakin is that the scene where his mom dies. Now, th I thought that was I thought that was handled very well. He becomes very angry and starts slaughtering the the Tusken Raiders, but that only lasts for like one second, and then it's done. So guys, I don't need to go too in-depth about Attack of the Clones because I've talked about it tons on my channel. I did a really in-depth review about it. So if you want to check that out, go ahead if you feel like it. I'm going to use Tiger Dude's uh, rating system because I already gave this a D on my channel, so I'm going to give it one out of four stars just because I'm over here. I thought I'd shake it up a little bit. <laughs> Alright, Tiger Dude, thanks for having me on here. Back to you now. Thank you so much, Nate, from Stupid Beagle Reviews for reviewing Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Now, like I said in my review for The Phantom Menace, it was an okay movie, but with Attack of the Clones, the whole time I'm sitting through this movie, I'm just sitting here going, George Lucas, what happened? What the hell happened? What kind of shit were you thinking, George Lucas? How did Attack of the Clones just become such a giant piece of shit? This was a piece of shit movie! But of course, before I get into my negatives, let's get to my positives because there are good things to admire in Attack of the Clones. Unfortunately, it's not enough because the negative outweighs the positives in this point. But there are positives that I did have, and the first positive is that Ian McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi was great. He is definitely the best character in this movie, as well as the best actor in this movie. And it's really interesting to see how much Obi-Wan Kenobi has grown, because this film does take place 10 years after the events of The Phantom Menace. So it's really cool to see how Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original was just young, and he was just someone still learning. And it's just really cool to see how much he's progressed in those 10 years. And definitely the acting from Ian McGregor was better here than in The Phantom Menace. Because Phantom Menace, he was just okay. But the thing is that, that movie didn't really get to make his character shine until the climax. Whereas in Attack of the Clones, I felt like his character did get to really shine here. There's some other good acting here, like when Anakin Skywalker and Padme meet up with like this family um, in which I'm not gonna get into details with that but one of them has Joel Edgerton surprisingly who I wasn't expecting to see in the Attack of the Clones to be honest um, I thought Joel Edgerton did a really good job here as well as pretty much everyone that was in that family that Anakin and Padme were interacting with I really enjoyed Yoda and Samuel L. Jackson's character as they actually had more to do here than they did in The Phantom Menace, because in The Phantom Menace, they really did nothing, and they were honestly wasted. As much as I really enjoy the characters, they were both completely wasted. At least in the title of the clones, they do have something to do, although it's really by the second half. The first half, they're still doing the same as The Phantom Menace, where they're just really just sitting around and talking, but by the second half, they actually get their asses up and go do something, which was actually cool to see, and I like that. Both of them got to at least shine a little bit. I don't know about a whole lot, but at least a little bit. There's one aspect 
in this movie, without any spoilers, that truly shows the darkness of Anakin Skywalker. Like this was the one moment where Anakin Skywalker, he wasn't being a brat. It was actually showing the true darkness of his character. And I felt like the one aspect that was in this film, it was handled very well. And I actually found that one aspect to be actually quite powerful. The thing that sucks is that the movie does cut it short, but for what the aspect was, I was invested enough into it. The scenes with C-3PO and R2-D2, I really enjoyed those scenes actually. My negatives for Attack of the Clones is that Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker was truly awful. Caden Christensen gives some of the worst line delivery I've seen in a movie, period. And I really mean period. It is just atrocious and sad how this guy delivers his fucking lines. It's just embarrassing. He's just all like, he doesn't understand me. And he's referring to Obi-Wan Kenobi, by the way. Oh my goodness, it's so awful. And the way he talks to Padme because they formed this fucking romance. It's not easy to sit through. And speaking of Padme, it truly pains me to say this. Natalie Portman was awful as Padme. The movie focuses more on the love story instead of focusing more on Anakin Skywalker showing his true darkness and it just wasn't very good. I would actually kind of beg for the movie to go to Obi-Wan Kenobi's storyline because that was actually a little bit more interesting than this one. It still wasn't that great of a plot or anything, but I mean, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi and him alone would actually make his subplot at least somewhat interesting. While with Anakin Skywalker and Padme, sitting through their romance was honestly a chore to sit through. I couldn't sit through another horrible romantic dialogue with just horrible acting from both actors. Now granted, Natalie Portman isn't as bad as Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen is by far the worst actor in Attack of the Clones, but Natalie Portman, I'm sad to say it, she was awful in this movie. And not to mention, Anakin Skywalker, he's just a brat throughout the whole movie. I mean, is this really the guy that restores balance to the Force? This is really the guy that does that? Because man, this film did a bad job of convincing me that when he's just whining and complaining and being an annoying little bitch throughout this entire movie. Oh yeah, not to mention that he's a fucking creeper. Like seriously, he has that weird creepy stare like... I don't know if I'm doing it right, but yeah, he just wouldn't stop at the stare. Like, come on, man. Really? Ugh. Oh yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Although yes, thank God, his role is actually small here. But the thing is that the small role that he has, it's just so stupid. I'm honestly just sitting here going, why George Lucas? Why? Why did you give Jar Jar Binks that kind of role? Like fine, we saw him less. But whenever he does pop up, which is like for a few scenes, it's still horrible to watch. And it was just a stupid decision. Christopher Lee as the antagonist in this movie. Now, Christopher Lee, when you hear that, you would think you would be in for such a cool villain. And he was good here. He acted well. He had a good screen presence, but his character was absolutely wasted. And everyone that talks in this movie goes, oh my gosh, he's like this powerful baddie. You don't want to mess with him. And then you watch him and it's like, um, this is apparently the most powerful guy. And even when he does show how powerful he is in the climax, it still wasn't really all that menacing to me, to be honest. The next truly awful thing about Attack of the Clones is that the CGI was truly atrocious. The CGI is actually much worse than the CGI in The Phantom Menace, because at least with The Phantom Menace, you actually had some good CGI going for it, in my opinion, of course, while other times the CGI looked bad. And even if the CGI did look bad in 
The Phantom Menace, it does not compare to how truly atrocious the CGI looked in Attack of the Clones. When you see the characters on land, it doesn't feel like they're on an actual land because it's so cluttered with nothing but CGI garbage that just did not flow well with this world at all. It's a Star Wars movie, come on! The storytelling in this movie is just so all over the place, it's just awful to watch because like I said, it just detracts from showing the true essence of what Anakin Skywalker is all about. Besides one aspect that was handled very well, Everything else was just Anakin Skywalker complaining with Padme just being a lovey-dovey. And the whole thing with the clone army, I thought that aspect of the movie was handled very poorly too. And even though I enjoyed some of the lightsaber fights in the climax to Attack of the Clones, it got really boring to watch. How do I get bored watching most of the lightsaber fight scenes in Attack of the Clones? Not to mention that it's hard to really enjoy the climax when it's just CGI mess galore. Like I said, the CGI was atrocious and it did not help it when the whole fight sequence is just CGI thrown on the screen, just being so bloated and so distracting that it's hard to get invested in it. And not only is just the execution so bad, but the movie for the majority really was just so boring to watch. It was a boring, painful movie to sit through. Overall guys, Attack of the Clones is one gigantic piece of shit that completely wastes showing what Anakin Skywalker is all about. It has atrocious CGI, poor execution, poor dialogue, a shoehorn awful romance between Anakin and Padme. Oh yeah, and most of the acting in this movie was so utterly wooden. I couldn't stand Attack of the Clones. So of course, I am going to give Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones one and a half out of four stars. But of course, you guys, that's just my opinion on Attack of the Clones. What did you guys think of Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones? Comment down below, let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I would love to thank my guest star, Stupid Beagle Reviews, aka Nate, for guest starring to give his thoughts on Attack of the Clones. He's a very cool dude, guys. He's very energetic. He's funny too. So if you guys want to check him out, I will leave a link in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!